known as the Garden City, Silicon Valley of India. Bangalore is famous for well-planned neighborhoods, education and employment opportunities. It is a city of dreams for many. This too is Bangalore. Street filth is visible but ignored by most of us. Yet it is a part of the city, the garbage city. No area, no locality is spared from this vision. Open dump yards is a reality. And sadly, for the human mistakes, human doings, the flora and fauna, the animals suffer. They breed among our waste. Go into my bag. Go into your bag. Throw here and there only. I also throw here and there. I don't know. But yeah, it's an empty road then, oh, obviously. Uh, like if there is a wet waste in my hand, I can't carry it in my bag or something. So I, I have be forced to throw it on the road. I never throw any garbage. I keep it in my bag, take it home and then throw it. How did Bagno become like this? Who's responsible? Nearby shops, residential complexes, and passers by. Dump garbage here. It's after all not a part of their home or shops. It is an unclaimed public space which every individual uses as their own private property to dispose their trash, their unwanted used items. It's worrying. Nobody seems concerned. And this dump continues to grow bigger every day. These are the unknown heroes of our city, working silently from 6 in the morning. These early birds are known as Paura Karmikas or PKs, who work strenuously to clean our littered neighborhood, our trash which we throw irresponsibly on the road. They gather garbage from various residential and commercial areas in their three-wheeled carts and push it to the closest collection point. The equipment provided to the PKs to clean our garbage is not only difficult to maneuver, but it also lacks efficiency. Simultaneously, they also have to overcome the intrusion of hungry stray animals. An alternative method to collect garbage from household is with the help of the garbage collection autos. These autos then drive to the collection or loading point. Our city has hundreds of open dump yards which are inadvertently converted to collection points where all the carts, the garbage collection autos, the BBMP trucks and compactors assemble. One of the garbage transfer method is by collecting the trash in a plastic basket and loading it into the BBMP truck. Another method is transferring the garbage from the cart to the garbage compactor. This involves direct and physical contact with unknown garbage material. Without the aid of safety equipments like masks and gloves, the PKs manually segregate our waste while transferring. 
they work closely with mixed waste which produces an obnoxious odor which makes the working environment toxic the last method is labor friendly where the garbage collecting auto mechanically unloads its content into the compactor the compactor compresses the garbage thereby removing the moisture from it this method has the maximum load carrying capacity and has the least tendency to drop garbage while traveling people is being completely oblivious and ignorant to the fact that they should not dispose trash on the streets everyone is equally responsible the public the government they are not doing the right work we are also not doing the right work by throwing here and there the responsibility basically the people they should stop throwing the stuff and the government and the public elevate and kintare it is of course the common man okay the people are uh, not uh, very uh, you know they are not bothered they are very careless and uh, they have this uh, it is not my problem attitude we people you are uh, everyone are the careless people who chuck it on the road citizens obviously general citizens the negligence of the citizens people people do we really want to leave such a garbage footprint behind is there nothing we can do to keep the city clean fortunately ngos and community organizations today like the ugly indians bangalore rising and bengaluru needs you are actively participating in social and civic awareness and working towards cleaning the filth on streets Bengaluru Needs You is a citizens movement led by Professor M V Rajiv Kauda through Solpa Cleanup Mardi drives BNY has demonstrated that if we stop pointing fingers and work get our hands dirty we can solve any problem when we went around Bangalore we saw lots of places which we call black spots places where garbage has become a perennial problem and so we talked to the residents and everyone says we can't do anything about this so then our team at bengaluru needs you decided that we've got to crack this somehow um and we basically said look i think we need to initiate some kind of a program where we solve a problem by stepping in and really understanding an issue and resolve it and if we can break that sort of uh, helplessness that people seem to have that sense that nothing we can do about this and so by demonstrating that we can find a solution we can be smart we can stop pointing fingers we can join hands instead you know if we do that then it will have a demonstration effect and um we actually succeeded many initiatives are out there but they essentially have a cosmetic impact they clean up and things get dirty again ensuring something more sustainable a solution that lasts that changes the dynamic of the entire process and so what we do is we uh, work with the other stakeholders um you know the government officials who are in charge of garbage management the engineers and the corporation we work with the corporator who has a stake in ensuring that uh, he or she is representing a clean neighborhood right and we certainly work with the people who are actually on the ground and when we work with the power carmicas the people who manage uh, garbage early in the morning uh, we discover that they have tremendous challenges there were certain systemic changes that we needed to bring about for example to prevent waste from being dumped on the ground what we call kasa mukta nela right ensure that it doesn't uh, pile up on the ground and ensure that there is a garbage auto or something that can collect waste during the day rather than just once a day when the garbage truck goes away and then of course we had to speak to residents and say this is how you should uh, change your behaviors your practices and they were quite willing to do that they just needed that nudge some guidance That's the new dumping ground. Take them out of the city. Yeah. Go on them. 
Not too sure. Also late. <laughs> Some river. I have no idea. I have no idea. Go somewhere out of the city. Goes to. We have to go to the No, I don't know. Maybe like you can get the decomposed into fossils. Dumping fields. Dump yards and rivers. Dump yards like in and around out, outskirts of Bangalore. They go to the landfill. To landfill. The trucks then travel at night to transfer all of these garbage to landfill. Mountains and oceans of garbage aptly describes Mandur. For a few years now, hundreds of trucks come to Mandur every night from Bangalore and dump the waste. Bangalore generates approximately 4,000 tons of garbage every day. Most people's childhood memories include hopscotch, scavenger hunting, hide and seek and many more. But for the children of Mandur, scavenger hunting is not a simple game but it's the harsh reality of life. Due to the lack of industries and job opportunities, many Mandur villagers are forced to earn their daily wages through rack picking and making money from recycling. Negligible amount of garbage is broken down, segregated and converted to compost. But is it enough? The volume of garbage at Mandur is invincible. Fully loaded trucks continue visiting Mandur, carrying our filth, our unwanted items, our trash, our garbage. We dump our city's burden on Mandur. But there is hope. We met a few people, social enterprises and NGOs that have been working to make a difference in this space. Shobha Altia is a residential community in Yalahanka with over 300 apartments and 50 villas. With an in-house green team led by Ms. Savita Hiremat, the apartment participates in segregating and composting their own waste. Whoever walks in into the complex has to be waste, waste conscious. We do a lot of work, we do all the segregation, housekeepers do so much of work and the drivers just go throwing around everything anywhere they want. So you can't leave one person out of the whole thing, you know. It is all the small parts that fit that fit into the whole. But you talk to them about what's happening in Mando, okay? They tend to actually they tend to sort of connect with the. So we are basically three bins. This is our primary segregation method. Okay. One is kitchen waste, which is put in the what they call it a two-in-one uh, bin. This is lined with newspapers. We don't use plastic bags here. It's banned in our apartment. And all the entire entire kitchen, whatever it may be, veg, non-veg, fruit peels, leftovers, uh, you know, tea, tea leaves. Everything goes into the kitchen waste. Anything that can't be recycled or reused, all hazardous waste goes into this this bin. And this often happens to be a very small quantity. Dry waste, basically um, reusable paper, not completely soiled or oiled, reusable paper, and all kinds of your rubber, plastic, and wood, fabric, and even uh, part of the e waste also we put in. Dry waste. Dry waste. Dry waste. Here you have shredded kitchen waste which we get from each household every day. We take it to our compost room where there is a shredder and all the shredding happens into smaller chunks. We don't turn it to turn it into something like a chutney or anything which other shredders do because for this particular method this is the consistency we need. So this is mixed with upgrade powder 
which is a coco peat based solution in enriched with uh, microbes which turn the uh, waste into organic material so we get almost like four to five crates per day it gets lined up and dated we put a date on the on each crate reduced to almost like uh, one third of its original quantity and all your uh, most of the kitchen waste has turned into compost the total amount of waste that these people send to landfill every day is just about 700 grams with proper segregation and composting you too can generate up to 2 quintals of compost within a span of just 3 to 4 days daily dump is a social enterprise that's working to make waste look beautiful and precious their main idea is to compose the kitchen waste and generate manure. Daily Dump is about making waste visible and beautiful. We're not just saying that we will uh, you know, solve the waste problem, we're saying we make waste really look good. And we do it by working with uh, water communities who make our pots so there's a social impact as well. And these pots can be used to turn your kitchen waste into compost. So in a typical Indian home, 60% of your bag is organic, which can be composted right away. So when uh, we say, you know, how do we solve the garbage problem, more than half the problem can be solved in your home, which means half the size of landfill, half the size of white garbage, everything will be like half if all of us actually do. Wet waste is precious and it can be composted to produce rich manure. At landfills, wet waste often gets mixed with dry and hazardous waste which leads to dangerous outcomes. For instance, organic waste like banana peels get mixed with battery acid, thereby forming toxic substances. These toxic substances easily seep into the soil and contaminate groundwater, which is then pumped through bowels and is used by public for drinking purposes. This can lead to various health problems and diseases. So organic waste mixing with this stuff is going to contaminate groundwater there are many, many uh, ways that it's going to affect us. So taking it, taking care of it at source. So it's like an argument being centralized and decentralized. Should we have one big centralized magic machine that will do everything or should we be centralized? So we are saying take care of it very well because there's a lot of savings that we have. Also it's called a kamba, uh, as in pillow. So this is being used. You can see there's waste gone in. Um, and this is the carbon based powder. Uh, an inoculum culture microorganisms that will speed up the composting process. So, we give you this, this you add every month. Add it over the wet waste so that there's no wet waste seed. And next day, again, add your waste powder. Waste. If you put, like, if you just fill this with waste, it will definitely stay. But if you layer it with enough carbon and oxygen, there won't be any stress. So where is the problem? The problem is you and me and our family. an open platform, we'll work with anybody and more than that we just want to also demonstrate that people can take the lead, you know, follow these kinds of techniques and actually go out there and solve problems. You know, solving the problem at the source, reducing garbage that is, uh, you know, that needs to go out from the home into, uh, into the landfill, you know, that we can actually dramatically reduce the volume and that's what we really like to get towards. For this, we need to educate people, we need to find solutions that work, and we need to ensure that sustainability becomes a mindset and a way of life. Change starts at an individual level. Be a change maker. Reduce waste and segregate it. It's your city and it's your responsibility. Keep it clean because Bengaluru needs you.